My name's Paul Stanbury. Um, I'm here in the midst of the, of the Nature Trek office, um, and um, I've been working for Nature Trek now for about 26 years. Um, I'm ops, ops manager. I look after uh, a, a range of, of different tours, including um, our tours to um, Argentina and Chile. Um, and I'm going to talk this evening, um, as the first slide suggests, on northern Argentina, um, um, from the Andes to I Iguazu Falls, um, and then take you to some of the, the highlights of that region and show you some of the, of the wildlife as well. And um, then I should mention that, that Ricardo, who is out in Argentina at this very moment, he lives in, in Salta, um, will be taking us down to the down to the south of the country. But as I mentioned, I'm going to focus my talk on the north. Uh, but all trips to Argentina start with a, a flight into into the capital, into Buenos Aires. And Argentina is an amazing country. It's 3,700 kilometres from north to south, 1,400 kilometres from from east to west. That's the equivalent of the UK stretching from the Shetlands all the way down to the Canary Islands. As you can imagine, there are a few countries in the world that can boast such a variety of, of scenery and topography and habitats and um, the most amazing uh, variety of, of wildlife as well. So say we fly into Buenos Aires and then from Buenos Aires, we fly out to um, our, our um, other sites. But even Buenos Aires is a fantastic uh, city actually for, for wildlife. There's a, there's a, a, a lovely reserve called Costanera Sur uh, on the edge of the edge of the city, um, fabulous for birds. And great introduction to uh, to South American bird life. But the main sites I'm going to talk about um, tonight are, are listed on this on this map here. So we've got um, Salta and the Andes up in the, the the top left of the map, and Salta's right on the on the very edge of the spectacular Andes mountains, which run north south along the um, the west coast of uh, of South America. Then we've got um, Marge Quita uh, Lake, the uh, largest saltwater lake in South America, another fabulous wildlife destination. The Ibera wetlands, um, almost like a like a, a mini a mini Pantanal. And you can't really visit northern, the northern Argentina region without a trip to I I Iguazu Falls. I'm going to start, though, up in the, up in the Andes. Um, and uh, we run uh, a range of Argentina tours that include time in this spectacular area of the country. We have a, a short birding tour, 10-day birding tour, that takes you from Salta up into the Andes and back again. We have another tour which combines the Andes with Iguazu. Um, and we're going to be developing a, a, a range of, of, of new itineraries um, over, the, over the, the coming uh, months and years. But Salt is a, a great place to start your, your, your trip. So you're right at the foot of the Andes here. Um, and it offers easy access to a range of, of, of different habitats from the Yungus cloud forest up to the dizzying heights of the, of, of the Antiplano, all, all within easy, easy reach. Um, and on our tours, we visit the youngest cloud forest. We also go up to the Altiplano uh, lakes as well. And the Andes, it's the longest mountain chain um, in the world, um, stretching all the way from Tierra del Fuego up into, up into Colombia and then Venezuela and up actually up into Central uh, America as well. Spectacular scenery, as well as some fabulous um, wildlife. Um, Salta itself so it lies in the, um, the, the cloud forest zone um, and we'll take you up into the cloud forest on, on all of the trips. You start up in the cloud forest and then we work higher up into the mountains as the, as the tour uh, uh, proceeds. These are lovely moss draped cloud forests, home to such birds as Sayaka tanager, white belly hummingbird, brown cup, red star bridges, guan, and a whole range of, of other birds as well. There's a really nice um, hotel um, that, that we, we stay in here. Um, so on the edge of the of the Yungus uh, cloud forest, um, you can sit out on out on the balcony, um, have a have a cool drink, look out over the forest and see some some, some wonderful birds. And they've even got some uh, interpretation boards just outside so you can identify uh, what's going to fly past and very comfortable uh, accommodation uh, as well. 
And after we've explored the, the Yungas uh, for a couple of days, we will head higher up into the Andes. Um, and as you, as you climb up in height, of course, the habitat uh, changes. Um, and as the habitat changes, the, the, the bird life changes as well. Um, and there's a wonderful range of, of different species that, that you'll see on this trip, um, so different ones as you gradually gain height over the, over the days. Um, here we have the, uh, the, 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 the burrowing parrot, um, um, uh, quite a, a large parrot, parakeet um, that lives uh, quite high up um, in the Andes. Tim showed you the, um, the, the torrent ducks um, down, in, um, down in southern Chile. Well, of course, they occur up in, up in the, the Argentinian Andes as well. Um, and they, they're incredible swimmers and they fight against these um, amazingly fast um, 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 turbid streams. In fact, you can, I've seen torrent duck up in Ecuador. It's a bird that, given the right habitat, um, lives from um, Tierra del Fuego all the way up into, um, into Northern South America. But beautiful birds, the male here with the black and white striped head and the female um, next to next, um, wing stretching alongside. As we climb, climb higher, habitats change again, and you enter um, the mid-elevation cacti forests of places like Los Cardonos National Park. Um, as you would imagine, the scenery, the landscapes here, are just spectacular, lots of wonderful photographic opportunities. The bird life, again, you know, again, as with the torrent duck, condors occur from, from Patagonia all the way north up into, up into Colombia. And, and they're a commonly seen bird as you, as you climb higher up into, um, up into the Andes. Uh, as well as the condors, there's lots of other species to look out for. Um, here we have the Andean uh, flicker, uh, which are often seen around on the rocks. They look, they, they act very much like our, our green woodpeckers over here and sort of foraging around on the ground looking for, looking for ants and, 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 and other insects. But we've got various other species up here to, to look, um, a variety of different siskins, Sierra finches. Um, there are um, miners, castaneros, um, another range of those, those oven birds that uh, Tim mentioned in uh, during during his his talk. But as well as the brown, there are some spectacular species to enjoy as well. Um, and this is the wonderful little red-tailed comet um, hummingbird, which it, which lives higher um, in the Andes. A beautiful, beautiful bird. Maybe the the, um, the sun, the light catches it just in the right way. As you can see on this photograph, the tail is a wonderful gold colour, and the back is crimson, um, iridescent crimson, scarlet. But they're quite common actually up in up in the higher uh, mid elevation uh, range. As is another bird that again occurs down in um, in, in Chile, the uh, beautiful long tailed meadowlark with its uh, bright scarlet throat and breast. And we climb gradually um, higher and higher. We give you time, of course, to acclimatize to the, to the altitude. Um, the scenery gets uh, more and more spectacular. Um, there's less and less vegetation as you, as you climb up and you're getting up into the high Altiplano and um, Puna um, habitats. Um, up here, we start to see the guanaco. Um, that again, so a lot of these species occur from Patagonia all the way north. But as you go further north, and of course the climate gets uh, warmer, the the um, Wanako live up at higher higher elevations. Um, and they're, they're in very similar habitat to that that Tim showed you down in um, Torres del Paine. But we also hope to see the um, the, the, the cousin of the the Guanaco, the beautiful Vicuña, um, a very um, delicate creature, um, graceful, thin neck, and they tend to live at a little bit higher altitude um, than the than the guanaco, and they're, they're commonly seen up in the up in the higher Andes um, and in northern Argentina. So we're going to be climbing up to a pretty dizzying altitude, really. You can get up to over sixteen thousand feet. This is um, off up, which is. In, in new money, for about 4,800 metres. This is the Abradal Ake uh, Pass, with volcanoes in the distance there. But even up here, you're still seeing an interesting um, variety of, 
of, of bird life, a very hardy bird life that can survive this high, high altitude in some pretty extreme conditions. So we're going to be looking for birds like gray, gray bellied seed snipe, um, a, um, a, 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 a type of wader um, that occurs in the high um, Andes. There's a variety of different seed snipe species that occur north south uh, through the Andes. The, the gray bellied is one of the, the common ones to look out for up in northern Argentina. And out on the Puna Step, one of my absolute favorites, um, the, the, the beautiful tawny throated dotterel. Um, these birds occur like, almost a like, similar sort of habitat, really, to the dotterel we get over here up in, up in Scotland. They occur up on the high um, windswept um, Puna Altiplano, and they occur around in little, little flocks. Absolutely beautiful, gorgeous birds. Um, and on several tours, we'll get far uh, north up near the, the border with Chile and, and Bolivia to Lake Pozuelos. Um, it's a beautiful Altiplano Lake that sits at 3,600 metres, so that's about 12,000 feet um, above sea level, surrounded by the most spectacular um, Altiplano landscape. It was designated a national park in 1981. And it's the home of some very special birds, including this one here, the, the Puna uh, flamingo, also known as James's uh, flamingo. But as well as the Puna flamingos, we'll be looking for um, Andean avocets. And there are silvery greaves up here. There are uh, there's the rare giant coot, various wintering um, wading birds from North America, such as beds and pectoral sandpiper um, and Wilson's phalarope. So really, even though you're up this high altitude in a pretty extreme environment, the bird life is, is incredibly um, diverse. Um, around the lake um, and in other sites near, nearby, we will, we will look for this most amazing little bird, probably one of the most sought after um, birds in the whole of South America, America the, the diadem sandpiper plover. And they occur on the high altitude, um, boggy, um, wet flushes that occur in, um, up up here they're quite difficult to see there's a couple of sites which uh, our guides know of and we hope to find them for you there are other sites um, to look for them in, in in chile as well but yeah an absolute key and uh, an iconic bird an iconic wader of the of the high andes um and then from from the, the high andes we take we gradually make our way back down again um to salter having seen a wide range of altitudes and landscapes and, and scenery too. But after you've explored the, um, the, the Andes, then there are, there are a lot of other interesting sites to explore in the region as well. We can go down to uh, Mar Chiquita um, Lagoon, we fly into Cordoba, probably flying from Salta to Buenos Aires, and then across to Cordoba. Um, and from there, it's only two or three hours up to, up to Mar Chiquita. Lagoon. This is the, say, the largest salt lake in the whole of South America, measuring 70 kilometers by 40 kilometers. And it's Argentina's newest national park. It's incredibly important, in particular for its, for its bird life and for its uh, flamingos and, and wintering um, wading birds. It was also the focus of the 2018 bird fair, which raised over 322,000 pounds for the continual protection and the designate it helped in the um, formulating the, the management plan and the, the designation of the reserve as a national park. And during our time in Archiquita, we always place ourselves along the southern edge of the lake um, at a place called uh, a Miramar. Um, and uh, the commonest flamingo here is the, is the Chilean uh, flamingo. But in the non-breeding season, they also do get a few Puna flamingos um, uh, and Andean flamingos um, as well. We'll take you out on a boat trip to look at the, at the flocks of flamingos out on the lake. Around the lake shore itself, there are loads of, of waders. The wake, lake shore is absolutely crowded with, um, with, wading, with wading birds. Um, this is one of the most important wintering grounds for Wilson's phalaropes um, anywhere in South America. In fact, up to 500,000, so half a million Wilson's phalaropes winter here um, some years. Most of them tend to winter on the northern edge of the lake. Um, but there are always some along along the southern edge um, as well. And if you if you visit uh, at the end of our winter in February March time, then you should hopefully see them in this wonderful breeding plumage. And this is a female bird, because the phalaropes, the females that are brighter 
than the males and the, and the females to space the males and, and it's the males that incubate the, the eggs and rear the young. They're out on the lake, there's some other spectacular birds to look for, the amazing great grebe, uh, one of my uh, absolute favourites, and there's some also smaller little white tufted grebes as well, look a little bit like the, uh, uh, the black necked grebes of, um, of, of Europe. And there are plenty of water birds to enjoy, a lot of variety of different coots and swans and, and ducks and, 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 and other species as well. It's a very, very diverse area. Around the edge of, uh, of the lake, there's a, a mix of, of different habitats, some agricultural areas some dry Chaco style um, 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 woodland and scrub. And burrowing owl is, is, is a common bird really throughout this northern um, Argentinian region, especially where you've got uh, agriculture and, and flat land. Now in the woodland, we'll be looking for some interesting um, land birds and hopefully birds such, such as this uh, scimitar bailed uh, wood creeper. There's a very different habitat here to the Andes and a very different uh, range of, of species um, to look out for. Um, and moving on, we move up to uh, the Ibra uh, wetlands. This is a, a, almost a mini Pantanal um, very similar habitat, similar wetland bird life. In fact, in fact, it even has jaguars now. Uh, jaguars were reintroduced into the Ebra wetlands very recently after an absence of 70 years. But you're not going to be very lucky to see a jaguar uh, the, uh, at the moment. But um, the, the bird life and the other wildlife here really is quite, uh, quite spectacular. The wetlands, the, the reserve protects a mix of grasslands, cattle ranches, wetlands. They'll say it's teeming with wildlife, including lots of lots of capybara, lots of uh, wetland birds, we've got roseate spoonbill here, um, just one of a wide variety of, of wetland birds you'll like to see, the lesser rear uh, in, the, uh, in, in, in the drier areas around the edge of the wetlands, some wonderful little birds as well, little passerines, such as the white um, Mon monjita, a beautiful, beautiful little bird uh, that occurs in, in, in the scrubby woodland around the edge of the, the wetlands. But for the bird, for the very keen bird, there's one particular species to see here. And this is the best place to see this particular bird probably anywhere in, in the whole of South America. And this is the very aptly named strange tailed tyrant. It's a type of tyrant flycatcher that lives out in the grasslands of the Ebro wetlands. And they have this bizarre, uh, as their name would suggest, tail. Um, and when they're flying, it's incredible things. It's, it's just a, a um, very, very odd bird, very, very rare localized, but but quite, but not difficult to see um, in the in the Ebra wetlands. Um, and if you explore Ebra, in fact, really, if you explore anywhere in northern Argentina, um, you really have to finish your trip with a with a couple of nights at the spectacular uh, Iguazu Falls. Um, it's not that far from Iber, actually. It's only a, a, a few hours' drive. Um, and this is in the province of Misiones. And it sits on the border between Argentina and Brazil. And there's spectacular 275 different individual cascades, waterfalls um, here. And it's surrounded by very lush um, forest. Uh, again, very different habitat to, to what you would have seen either in um, um, in the Andes or in Ibra or, um, or, or like, um, Marjikita and a very different variety of bird life as well. You can see in this photograph here, lots of, lots of little black dots wheeling around in the sky. Well, these are the, the great dusky swifts that you, that you hear about to see in all the David Attenborough programmes, not only <clears throat> wheeling about above you, but plunging through the waterfall um, to, to nest and roost um, inside on the rock faces uh, behind the great torrent of water. And this, so this photograph here was taken, I took this with a, with a standard camera, with a standard lens. And you can see these amazing birds roosting and sitting on the side of the, of the cliff face as the water plunges down beside them, behind them. And we'll also visit the, the very famous Devil's Throat. <coughs> which I sort of got at the moment, so excuse me. <coughs> Um, and here, um, this is one of this is the largest of the, of the, of the falls in Iguazu, where there's over two million liters of water pour over the falls every single second. So it's an absolutely spectacular place um, to visit. But as well as seeing the falls, then we will we'll explore the, the lush forests as well, looking for the, the bird life. Toco toucans are, are, are common here, actually often seen in the in, in the grounds of the falls themselves. 
uh, feeding in the trees around the uh, information center and little cafes. In the forest, we'll be looking for the beautiful swallowtail mannequin and hopefully even birds such as the, the, the equally beautiful uh, blonde crested woodpecker. And an interesting range of, of, of butterflies, insects, reptiles and, and other things. It's just a great place to, to end your, your, your stay in, in, in Argentina. Spectacular scenery, some really nice wildlife as well. And as you imagine, some very, very good uh, hotels. So <coughs> before my voice finally packs up, <coughs> excuse me, um, I, will, I will end it there and say thank you very much um, for listening. Um, if you've got any questions at all on, on Argentina or Northern Argentina, please let me know. I think we're going to take a, a, a break now. Um, and then after the break, Ricardo's going to continue with um, a trip around Southern Argentina. So thank you very much.